Today, we're going to talk about the top five reasons that WordPress sucks. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I'll have to say that I've been using WordPress for about 14 years. I'm going to keep using it. I still love it. There's still lots of things it does really well, but it does have its issues. Let's talk about those. It is getting old. It's very old. It's nearly 20 years old now. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this does come with a bit of a disadvantage and it really is starting to show its age. If you look at the control panel, this definitely looks a lot older, especially when you compare it to its uh, competitors. The commercial competitors like Wix, Squarespace, Shopify, all look a lot more modern than this, and they put a lot of effort into making it look shiny and snappy, um, appealing to a commercial audience. This is fine. I like. I don't mind using it, but for someone coming across from, if you're trying to convince someone to stop using Wix and come use this, this is way better. It doesn't look way better. Your first impressions do count. So I'd hope, I'd hope they would um, update this and make it look more pretty one day, but it doesn't seem to be too high on their list of things to do. It's too easy and it's too popular. This might sound like a good thing, but it does have some negative effects on the industry. Because if it's so easy, anyone can buy a cheap web hosting account, launch a WordPress website in uh, half an hour, and suddenly the next day they might call themselves a web developer, start trying to run their own small business and put out some absolute garbage uh, products for people. And it does tarnish the reputation of WordPress because the actual range of quality uh, can range from absolute garbage to top high-end, high-quality commercial enterprise websites. So it can cover a, such a range of quality because it's popular, it's free, it's 40% of the whole internet. So you can imagine if you took 40% of the whole internet, it's a wild range of stuff not all of it's going to be good, but that does kind of hurt its reputation. It's kind of like Microsoft Windows in the way that um, if you look at all the Windows software, some of it's awesome, some of it's terrible. Um, it's just because most people use it and it has such a big audience that the um, user experience can be extremely variable. So if you're watching this thinking, oh, I should actually learn to be a better WordPress developer myself, let's talk about how you might actually do that. Of course, one of the most effective ways of improving your WordPress development skill is by doing a WordPress class, which is the perfect time to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. Now is the perfect time to invest in yourself. And with a Skillshare membership, you can engage in your hobbies and passions all year long. It's the perfect way to start and finally keep your resolutions for the new year. Make 2022 the year you perfect a new creative hobby, land a new career, or launch your business. Try out a risk-free 30-day trial to test it out yourself. Now, I'm a Skillshare member, and the reason I joined was because I was interested in becoming a better web developer. So one of the classes I've been taking is WordPress Academy by Chris Dixon, Learn WordPress Step-by-Step. Step. Now, this one, eight and a half hours, 85 lessons, all dedicated to WordPress. They go very deep into um, how WordPress works end-to-end. -end. You even get to learn the basics of PHP, for example. So you can become a true WordPress developer, even develop your own theme using the info that you get in this class. The value I think this is going to bring to myself is that it's going to improve my career in web development and it's also going to help me make better video tutorials for you guys to improve this YouTube channel as well. So I'll put a link down there in the description and in the comments. Now the first 1,000 people to use that link will get a free one month trial for Skillshare. So check that out if you're interested, but let's get back to our video. It is kind of overkill for a lot of basic projects. I'll show you what I mean. Let's take the most popular theme, Astra, look at their basic starter templates. A lot of these are can be done as a static website. You don't actually need WordPress to produce a website like this. But the thing is you can get this up and running in maybe 10 minutes. It's extremely productive to use WordPress for this, but you don't actually need to be using PHP and a database to put up a basic static website like a lot of these Astra templates actually are. A professional web developer could easily just use a bootstrap template um, all you need here is HTML, CSS, and some JavaScript, and you get something that's extremely robust, doesn't need plugins, doesn't need updates. Um, all you need to do is get the template running and then customize the HTML with your own content and you're all set. You don't need to worry about the security long-term. You don't need to worry about um, maintenance, all these things that actually add cost long-term to WordPress. You can avoid these if you do it um, in a more professional way up front. So if you're interested in actually learning some more about static templates, I've been thinking about putting some of this content on the channel, but I'm not sure how popular it will be going through editing HTML on a YouTube video. Let me know if you're interested in that because I might, I might do it if people are interested. 
But my point is, I don't think it's the best solution for a static website. I think um, there's lots of other ways to generate a static website. You don't need to use WordPress. You don't need to deal with PHP and having a database and having constant updates um, if this is all you need. My next point is the plugin ecosystem. This is, again, this is a huge strength. There's thousands and thousands of free plugins that can solve basically every issue that anyone who comes across can be done by downloading a plugin and solving your issue. Now, this does come with its own issues in itself. So the WordPress repository itself has 59, nearly 60,000 free plugins on here. Um, beginners, as soon as they require any kind of function or any kind of edit, they go and start searching. And then how many times have you seen a beginner website where they've uh, got 50 to 100 plugins for every little thing. They've just installed a new, another plugin. They're using cheap shared hosting. It's bloated and it's slow and it's awful. Um, this is a big disadvantage, but I think it's a big advantage as well. So um, I think once you've developed the skill to choose the right plugins and only use the minimal amount necessary, that's really important. I've actually done a video on that. I'll put that video up there um, if you want to check that one out. How many plugins is too many? I've done a very um, detailed analysis on how to understand this issue. But besides the WordPress repository, there's third-party plugin markets as well. You've got um, the Envato market, you've got Template Monster, you've got um, WPMU Dev, all kinds of people developing plugins outside of the WordPress um, official um, repository as well. Um, all of these plugins together, it's really hard to get a stable operating environment. It can be kind of risky when um, updates um, conflict, they can break each other. Um, a lot of times um, it can be a little risky running too many plugins on there. And the last one is its poor security reputation. I think this is really unfair on WordPress. I think, again, it's like Microsoft Windows. Just because everyone uses it, it gets targeted. And so most hacks occur on the web on WordPress, just like most hacks um, occur on Microsoft Windows when you're talking about a desktop environment. It just is a byproduct of its popularity and a byproduct of that plugin ecosystem where there's just so many thousands of plugins and there's such variable quality. So again, check out that video on how many plugins is too many plugins and how to choose good plugins. I'll put that video up here, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.